Hi everyone, welcome to His Arrows Our Hands. If we haven't met before, my name is Celeste and I am the homeschooling mom of three boys. It has been a while since I have posted a video and that is due to a major life change that our family has had. Two weeks ago, our family moved to a new state. We've been enjoying this transition and going through it together as a family. As much as I have wanted to post more consistently, the reality is, as I talked about in our time management video, I have given the Lord my 24 hours of the day and every single day I truly ask God, God, what would you have me do today? And in this season of our family transitioning and moving to a new state, I really felt the Lord calling me to invest my time, invest my energy, invest my resources in helping our family in this transition. As I shared in previous videos, our family was located in the state of Massachusetts and that's where we've been homeschooling for the first four years of our homeschool journey. We have now moved to the state of Virginia and we are so excited to start our fifth year of homeschooling in this brand new state. Over the past few weeks, as we've been transitioning and going through this journey, as I've been packing boxes and doing different things in this process, I thought about what are the things that have helped me in this process of us going through this change and going through this move. If you yourself are in a time of transition, my prayer is that this video may be a blessing and encouragement to you. Number one is prepare for the change. This first tip, I'm actually gonna reference a video that I shared in the very beginning of this year. The very first video that I shared in the year 2022 was entitled Preparing for Change. And I shared about the reality of how we can prepare for change in our lives, in our homeschools, because change is inevitable. As I was recording that video, this move was honestly on my mind and this big transition that our family was about to undertake. And so many of the things that I shared is very tied to that big change that was coming to us as a family. In that video, I shared different ideas and tips of how to best prepare for change, things that have helped us and things that have been such a blessing and helped us really make a smooth transition to this new stage. So I'm gonna link that video. If you haven't seen it and you'd like to check it out, I pray that it can be of encouragement to you. Tip number two is to research your homeschool laws. We homeschooled in a state that a different level of regulation than the state that we have moved to. So the very first thing I would recommend is to go and check your homeschool laws for the new state that you are going to be homeschooling in. Um, some resources that I could recommend are HSLDA. You can also look for specific homeschool groups that work within your specific state. When we lived in Massachusetts, AHEM was a resource that was available to us as Massachusetts homeschoolers as well as many others. Now that we are in Virginia, I found that HEAVE is an organization that works very actively here in Virginia with homeschoolers. So being able to link to those groups, get engaged, being able to also find local homeschool groups in the new area where you will be moving. Facebook has a lot of um, different groups that you can join and start seeing what's going on, you know, what activities, what kind of things are happening in the community you will be moving to so that when you move, you have a good sense of what to expect. Tip three is to travel to the area beforehand if you are able to. It's something that helped us so much in our transition. Even though we just moved now in this month of July to Virginia, we have traveled many times throughout the last year to the area. We're able to travel to the area beforehand. It's so helpful. Something that we did is we were able to visit our local library here. We were able to go to different stores, get to know the neighborhood area, go to the local parks. It's really helpful, especially for your children. Um, to little by little get to know the new area they're gonna be living in. So it's not such a big stark change and a shock kind of the very first time seeing this new area, but something that you can transition as a family if you are able to. I heard a video a few months ago on how to homeschool on the go. This was actually one of the trips that we had taken to this area um, while we were in this transition. So if you haven't checked out that video and like to check it out, I'll be sure to link it as well. Tip four is to take a break during the move if you can. So depending right on what, when your move has to take place, if there is flexibility, also how you homeschool, if you homeschool school year schedule, or if you homeschool year round, hopefully you can work it out so that during your move you're able to at least take a few weeks off for that transition it's something that we're so grateful we were able to do we were able to plan this right kind of in our summer break so it was so wonderful to be able to wrap up our school year 
prior to our move so that we can have a few weeks to kind of just get to know the new area, enjoy it as a family, unpack all of the boxes and kind of set up also our new schoolroom area, everything that we need before the start of the new year. So that was extremely helpful to us. My fifth tip is to keep communication honest intentional and constant. I think that when we're in a time of transition and move, it's so easy just to get kind of focus our head in what we need to do and just kind of focus in and forget about all of the relationships around us and the different things that do really demand our attention during a time of transition. The very first relationship we want to care for is our relationship with our Lord, Holy Father. I'm keeping that relationship fervent, constant, prioritizing our time with the Lord during this time of change will be so much blessing, so much help. Because as everything else is changing and moving, having that constant anger in our Lord is something that will be such a blessing and such a guide for our steps as we move through this transition. Also keeping the communication open with our family, with our spouses, with our children, getting to know how is everyone feeling during this time? How can we best work together? Also making sure that we have a clear vision of what's happening and what to expect in the move. And lastly, also keeping open communication with anyone else that can be impacted by our move. We as a family left behind a lot of our extended family, which was a big change for us and a big change for them as well. So I think it's such a blessing to be able to Take advantage of the last weeks you have or this last season you have where you are and be able to enjoy and have that communication open so that you can see how everyone's doing and you can really invest the time and your energy into taking care of each one of those relationships. Those are just some quick tips that I wanted to share, things that maybe are very practical, simple, but that really were a blessing and help to us in our transition as a family. Prayer is that it will also be a blessing to you. The last thing I wanted to share goes very much in line with keeping our relationship with the Lord fervent and constant and intimate and continual. I wanted to share this resource, a resource that I pray will be a blessing to you if you would like to check it out. It is very special to me because it is a journey the Lord took me in through his word throughout the year 2020. Throughout the year 2020, the Lord moved me to be able to write a book. It's not something that was in my plan, not something that I can honestly say I had set out to do. It really started with just a journal that I was keeping with the Lord. And from that journal, the Holy Spirit just moved me to be able to share with other women as well, all that the Lord had blessed me with throughout that process. And so I felt moved to be able to do that. And throughout the year 2020, I was able to write and publish this book entitled Living Life at the Feet of Jesus, a resolution for a woman's heart. In this channel, I try to share encouragement for homeschool moms or moms in general, right? Um, things that I pray will be a blessing to you. This book really goes into a lot more detail, takes you through the word of God and the different themes that are so applicable to our lives as women. Five sections of the book are, part one is For We Walk by Faith, part two is Completely Surrendered and Completely Me, Part three is count it all joy. Part four is sisterhood. And part five is my fullness. And I pray that if you are looking for encouragement for the start of this new homeschool year and you'd like to check it out, I'll be sure to link the links down below. The book is available in English and is also available in Spanish. You can read through this alone, or if you'd like, you can team up with a sister or a friend and read it together and share and go through the word of God. And my prayer, my sister, is that this may be a blessing to you as you embark on a new homeschool year. Next videos that I hope to get out in the next couple of weeks are our curriculum picks for the new homeschool year. This new year, we will have a ninth grader, our first year in high school. So we're gonna have a seventh grader and a fifth grader. As I continue to unpack the boxes and take out the curriculum, I look forward to sharing those pics with you. Meanwhile, I'd like to leave you with this verse. It is the opening verse that's found right in the beginning of the book, praying that you may receive this word into your life and that it may be an encouragement to you. Psalm 73, 28 says, But as for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the sovereign Lord my refuge. I will tell of all your deeds. I pray that you and your family are well. I pray you are blessed. I pray you have a wonderful start to your new homeschool year. And I look forward to talking to you soon.